Hello everyone, thank you so much for being this presentation today. I'm so grateful to be able to present our team's current work. Today I'm going to be talking about myself, Dr. Alan Martino, and Dr. Aaron Brenner's work on the experiences and priorities of women with disabilities regarding reproduction and pregnancy. To start this presentation, I want to begin with a bit of background knowledge about why this research is critical to healthcare. Although access to healthcare is a fundamental human right, studies have found that categories of sexual health, pregnancy, and reproduction for people with disabilities are often really neglecting their experiences. Usually due to an inaccessibility and a lack of inclusion in these categories, previous studies have discussed the prevalence of people with disabilities feeling significant stigma when discussing and being included in topics of sexuality and building a family. Many obstetricians and gynecologists report not feeling equipped to support disabled women's pregnancies, which is really highlighting the current gap within the research. Within this notion, women with disabilities have found it difficult to reach out for support as there's often a lack of knowledge surrounding disability-specific information in regards to pregnancy and reproduction. Some individuals often report offices can be physically inaccessible. Additionally, many studies have shown that the method of conversation between the individual with a disability and the physician is often a barrier. As healthcare providers have been insensitive in their response when a woman asks about topics surrounding reproductive and pregnancy care for their disability. Failing to use plain language and being equipped to discuss disability specific issues in the field has limited people with disabilities in reproduction and pregnancy healthcare. In looking at our research questions, there's two main groups that we're going to be looking at within the current study. There are women with disabilities, as well as physicians, physicians themselves. So our first question aims to address what are women labeled slash with disabilities perspectives on the current reproductive and healthcare system? And then to address the physician perspective, we're going to be asking what are physicians perspectives on the current system for women labeled slash with disabilities regarding pregnancy and reproduction? Now I'm going to go over a little, a little bit of the methods about how we aim to address these. We're going to be doing interviews within our study, so these interviews will typically take be an hour long, and I'm going to go over a couple of the questions that we're going to be asking each group. So for the lived experience group, so the women with disabilities, we'll be asking questions such as, could you tell me a little bit about your experience in the healthcare system with reproductive or pregnancy support? As well, please explain any supports you believe the current system is missing, and please explain any barriers you have felt when seeking support for reproduction or pregnancy care. For physicians, we're going to be asking questions such as, do you have more patients with physical or intellectual slash developmental disabilities in your practice? Is the individual with a disability generally involved in the conversation about their health? And have you received specific training surrounding people with disabilities? In how we aim to adjust this within our methodology, we're going to be doing these interviews and then transcribing them verbatim. These interviews will then be analyzed with using open and thematic coding within the MaxQDA programming system. Within our project, we talk a lot about knowledge mobilization in the lab and how important it truly is to discuss the topic. So all this information we receive from these literature reviews and interviews within the study is critical and so helpful for these communities that the research is impacting. We draw our inspiration from individuals and what they have told us with their lived experiences, as well as community partners in ways that we can make tangible tools and infographics and videos to actually support individuals with disabilities and the physicians that are working with them in their practices. As a couple examples, this one is an infographic regarding what to expect for your first pap smear. This is a topic that's often not fully talked about in healthcare and can be difficult for even able-bodied individuals to understand. So we really wanted to break down the system and talk about very individually how, these, how the process is gonna work, create a visual plain language resource for these individuals to use. As well, we have an individual uh, infographic made for physicians, how to make your office more accessible, aims to ensure that physicians can understand simple ways and little procedures that can help people with disabilities in their office. All this research is being done within the Disability and Sexuality Lab, and with, the lab is always working to advance research and advocacy efforts at the intersection of disability and sexuality to start conversations and reduce the taboo. Please feel free to follow our Twitter or review our website if you want to look at any of our knowledge mobilization resources I've discussed within the presentation or keep up with the project as we begin interviews and recruitment. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation today. Please feel free to email myself, Dr. Alan Martino, or Dr. Aaron Brennard if you have any additional questions. And here are my references. Thank you so much.